Hey, what's up, everybody? Wardrobe here. Sorry I had to move my mic around there. I wasn't quite ready for that. Just wearing the hat of destiny today. Uh, week 9 results, 1983 TBFL, Totally Bitchin' Football League. Uh, we saw an interesting climb. Otherwise, we just saw more separations. This is the week that all the top four were playing all the bottom four. So pretty much solid guaranteed wins in, in like three away games, I think. <clears throat> so there are going to be some away points given. Oh, I don't know if I gave all the away points, so I'll have to check that. <clears throat> so let's see the first game milwaukee rolls into ryan goes across the pond there and uh again you sh should be a victory for ryan right because they're just sitting at home and people got to travel to them no ryan loses 20 to 9 what a game though there are 14 points that ryan did not get at the end of the first half they couldn't make it happen and so they were supposed to get a touchdown based on the roll but the time ran out same at the end of the game fourth they missed a chance for a touchdown. So that was 14 points missed. 14 points would have got them in victory. Uh, anything else happened there? Um, punt, fumbled back. Yeah, there was a, a Milwaukee punted. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. Milwaukee punted, um, but then the return team fumbled it, and they got the ball back, and they got a field goal out of that. So that was uh, 10 points uh, for them on that. So or three points to make it 10-3. Uh, that's pretty much that game there. Uh, 29 helped Milwaukee uh, just solidify their place. Though those two in those two defense, those two touchdowns there makes me wonder about the Milwaukee defense, but they just solidified first place. Um, Tulsa had rolled into Muncie, you know. They wanted to make sure they got that win to keep Milwaukee from separating from, and they got that 37-23. Big things in this game. Uh, not a whole lot here. A couple staunches stopped things. We had a nice run of scoring near the end, um, but they just couldn't separate it. Oh, we did have a kickoff fumbled for a um, for a poor poor field position. Oh wait, what happened? Poor position. Then they got a TD run, and then they missed the extra point. What was that? Oh, that was uh, Muncie. So it would have been 37-24, but it still wasn't enough, and they just couldn't make it happen. So pretty solid victory for Tulsa, giving them a lot more points, and you'll see how it helped them, you know, basically keep up with uh, Milwaukee. Next game, San Francisco rolls into Akron. San Francisco, you know, not the greatest team in the world. Akron, number two seed going into this season. San Francisco, number seven. You know, kind of played out as it did. What did I just say that San Francisco won that? Boy, anyway, San Francisco lost that, as should have happened. 10-30. Uh, again, big deals in this one. Well, the, the, yeah. Okay, now this is the weird one. San Francisco, first possession, field goal, miss. Um, yeah. Oh, well, first of all, their kickoff was in the open. They had a chance, but then they got a field goal, and they missed it. Uh, Akron had a field goal, uh, almost blocked, almost blocked. So 0-3, they go up. And then uh, San Francisco had a punt, the next drive, almost blocked. Then Akron, TD run, and then uh, San Francisco immediately answered with a TD pass. So it was 7-10 moving into that. So second period was kind of second period. So punt CO almost blocked. And then Akron had an interception at the end of the half, ending the second half at 10-13. So Akron was holding on, but they just would not run away with it. Um, a field goal. Akron started the second period like, okay, let's get the second half. And they're like, yeah, let's separate this. Well, they kicked a field goal. They missed. So that was a crazy block, misses, they're kicking, special teams are crazy, 10-13. Uh, the third quarter into 10-16, um, so separated their lead by six. And then they started the second, fourth period, uh, fourth quarter with a run, making it 10-23. And then they got another TD pass, making it 10-30, and there was just no chance. Nothing else happened. Akron got an interception. San Francisco got an interception, or intercepted, and that was the game. 10-30, helping Akron to... Uh, Again, solidify the top notches. But then, number three, Austin Maroons go into Street Fort Commandos. Number three against number eight. Ooh, you can see it didn't happen. So the only top seed to lose to a lower seed, 10-21 uh, here. Anything crazy in this game? Eh, a couple fumbles, nothing crazy. It was a pretty – it was 3-0 Austin at the end of the first quarter, 36 at the end of the – Austin 3, Street Fort 6 at the end of the first quarter – first half, sorry. And we saw a little bit of scoring action. It was 315 at the end of the third quarter. Um, oh, TD run, but then we had a blocked extra point. That's why it was only 315. It should have been 316. So another block kick. So that was crazy. Excuse me. There were a lot of one ones. Um, and then they couldn't make it. It was 318, then 1018, and then 1021, 1021. So that was it. 
punt at the end of the game, and that was that. Let's go take a look at how that looks with all the um, with the standings here. That's something else I'm going to do, as you can see on here on the right. So um, the only change we saw, look at Shreveport. Let's look, just take a look at Shreveport here. Let's go up to where, let's see where they were at the end of week seven. At the end of the first half of the season, they were last place. So, uh, preseason eight, eighth place, one and five. They won, uh, jumped two spots because of some uh, other losses and stuff. So they went two and five, and now they're sitting at three and five. Now they're in fifth place. I wouldn't say it's a solid fifth place. But it's a fifth place, and that is pretty good. They're outperforming. I did notice, like, so the one, two, three, fours are up top. This is really making me think, like, maybe I just need to play seven games, and then that would be it. And then I do a little playoff because right now it's just separating. But let's take a look at this. I thought, well, let's keep track of this and see how the, the second half goes. So uh, Milwaukee is 2-0. and Tulsa is 2-0. and So that makes sense. San Francisco is 0-2. Makes sense. Austin, though? Austin, the number... Three preseason seed is 0-2 in the second half right now. That's not good. Ryan, 0-2, not surprising. Muncie, 1-1. One one. Akron, 1-1, one one, not surprising. And then Shreveport. Look at that Shreveport, 2-0. and oh. So they are in, technically it would be third place, I guess, <laughs> uh, if they were, you know, if this was a new season. So that they're really outperforming. Let's see how Shreveport started this season here in the first two games. In the first two games, Shreveport was 0-2. So very interesting. And do they play the same teams the way the schedule goes? Shreveport, Muncie, and Shreveport, Austin. It should. I think it just plays the same thing. Shreveport, Austin, Shreveport, Muncie. No, I don't think they played them, but they did play Austin the first one. So uh, what you're seeing here is, now what's here is what's interesting. So we have some chances for Shreveport. Shreveport is playing um, Muncie the next week. So they could win that game. So they could go in four and five. Austin is playing Tulsa. Austin could lose that game. But it's interesting. This is what happens when you have two point two game separation here. It won't shift them at all, but that's how Shreveport's going to bump themselves into that fourth place is just slowly winning and hoping some of these teams. But the problem is these teams have to lose. I mean, because you just can't catch up, you know, when you're so far behind. So you just really need teams to lose, which is the hard one. It's not all in your – but you just win the games. So, uh, see, Akron and Ryan, so – Akron should get that win, which would make them six and three. Um, uh, Tulsa is playing uh, Austin. I would say that's not a, you know, it's not a given here. Um, it is not a given. So it's going to be Austin and Tulsa. Now, Milwaukee's really hoping Austin can pull it off. Now, Shreveport wants Austin to lose, but Milwaukee really wants Austin to win because that would help them separate while well, Milwaukee's got to win. They're going into San Francisco. And, you know, you see San Francisco, you know, one and four at home. Um, Milwaukee four and one away. So let's see what happened in the last Milwaukee um, San Francisco game. Let's see here. I wish I had a quick way of looking this up, but I don't, so that's cool. We're going to just go look at all the – so Milwaukee, San Francisco, the first game, 24-22. It was a close game. Um, and so, I don't know, tight game, but San Francisco isn't playing well right now, so and Milwaukee is definitely playing well. Um so and I was curious if we gave everyone their away points. So 4-1, 12, 12, uh, 7, 6, 6, 3, 3. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Shreveport needs to get themselves in a way. But where's Shreveport? Are they what? Uh, yes, they are away. Playing Muncie. So, yes, Shreveport could really, really use an away win uh, to give them three points. But Muncie's got that six. So, <clears throat> But if they can go uh, four and five <clears throat> and beat Muncie, then they'll you know be a game ahead of them, which will really help them out. So it's fun stuff. Um, I don't know what else to do here. Uh, what else to talk about? I mean, so it'll be interesting to see kind of at the end of the season. I'll need to go check out this prior season too. I don't know. I don't think I kept track of. 
I don't have all the, I didn't do as good a job of keeping track of the weeks. So I can't tell you where they, I mean, I have to do the math here and kind of look at this at the end of week seven. I might, I don't want to mess with that, but, um, Look at Shreveport got fifth place last. No, they got sixth place last year. One, two, three, four, four. Oh, they got fifth place. Oh, that's interesting. If they ended fifth place again, that'd be crazy. Um, Milwaukee. Look at that. Milwaukee was four and ten last year. San Francisco Colts suck. And they suck all the time. Austin was down. So Ryan is down. Muncie. Huh. Acker in the top four again. <clears throat> kind of fun to see. So okay. Um. And if that's the case, if I only need to play seven games to really get separation, but I remember last year, I think it was Austin was like, they went 4-0, and then they went 0-4, and, and then they went 4-0 and again. I mean, it was crazy. Um, I think it was them that did that. But um, Okay, anyway, that's uh, week nine. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, week nine. And uh, so we could see some movement next week. Um in week 10 with uh, Akron playing, let's go just go over that real quick. Akron playing Ryan. Ah, see, that should be a victory for them. Akron should get that win. So they'll go six and three. Um, San Francisco, Milwaukee should be a win for Milwaukee. Solidifying their lead. Shreveport into Muncie. That's a toss up. But Shreveport is in, in, enjoying their climb. So I'm sure there's a lot of excitement for them to get that and getting their first away victory, which would give them three away points. And then Austin into Tulsa. So another potential close one. Um, let's see. if Who's Akron playing again? Akron's playing. Oh, see, that's this. Again, we could see. I mean, when you're playing each other in the top four, in the bottom four, you're just kind of beating each other up. But again, it would just continue that separation um, because Austin would go six and four if they beat the Ravens. Um, that wouldn't shift Tulsa at all because they're two games. You want that those leads, man. That's why Milwaukee really wants to separate from Tulsa because you get that two-game lead. That's that's pretty significant. It's pretty interesting because you think, ah, two games. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, that's why we do it. That's why I do it, and we'll talk to you later. See ya.